Hey, what's up? I've been getting this question a lot lately whenever I share my music and people find out I use OpenMPT, so I thought I'd make a quick video on it and how it works, showing you only what you most likely need or want to know about the program. So what is and how to get started in OpenMPT? To put it bluntly, it's basically music making software that's mostly sample based, uses commands instead of automations, you have no piano rolls and the progression of the notes is vertical rather than horizontal. So it's got quite a few differences with your traditional digital audio workstation. They started somewhere around the late 1980s and they are still very powerful today. Most people gain interest in them to either make chip tune or break chord music. You can do any and every style and genre in a tracker. They're how electronic music first used to be made back in the day and they've stuck around because they're just as powerful if not more than DAWs nowadays. So it's really just a matter of preference. You get the most out of this program if you learn all the tricks and keybinds for working with it the most efficiently you can. OpenMPT is free and it's been my favorite piece of software ever since I started using it and I don't want to go off the rail explaining the history so let's get straight into the program. This is what you're going to see when you first open up the program. You want to head over to the file and then hit new. When it comes to trackers, there's different kinds of modules and formats for them, and all of them have their own pros and cons and affect the way samples and effects work. I personally prefer using the Impulse Tracker IT format, but this guide should generally work for all of them. So we're going to hit New, IT, and then we're going to be on the General tab. Here you can set your song and artist name, the BPM of the song, and below we have our channels for each instrument we plan on using. It'll be displayed in a race of four, but we can click here to cycle through them. We can change their volume, pan, and also apply effects at this drop-down menu. Down below in plugins is where we'll load any VST effects or VST instruments into the program. You simply just click on select, and there you'll need to add and load your plugins. You just select it and hit put in effects and the number of whatever effects slot it'll be going into. Then you should be able to load them here. Up next we have the patterns tab, and here's where the magic happens. This is where we compose, structure, and arrange our song. Instead of having the tempo marked in pulses and all, we will have these rows of numbers. It'll take some getting used to, but it works just like in a regular DAW. You have these guide markers which will be useful for most things in a time signature that's over 4, but you can still work and adapt it however you want. You can click on the settings of the current pattern you're on at the top left and change the amount of rows here. You'll see all of the rows divided into different channels as well, and usually each channel will be for one instrument. Although an exception of course, when you want to do chords and stuff of the sort, you'll need more than one channel. At the top left is where our instruments are going to be, since here is where they'll show up once they're loaded. Below that are our patterns, which are the different parts or variations of our songs. To give you an example, I could do 1, 2, 1, 2, and that'd be verse, chorus, verse, chorus. You can do anything you want with it. You can also right-click this to see more options. And here's the quote-unquote piano roll part. This is where you input your notes, instruments, volumes, and effect commands. There's four items inside of each little bar. From left to right, the first one is the note that's going to be played. The next one is the instrument number, which is going to be what instrument is playing that note. The next one is the volume. And the last one is the effects. You can also double click this and you'll get a tiny little menu with all of the things you can change shown to you in a drop down menu. To play the pattern, you can press F5 to start, stop and resume. You can press F6 to play the song from the start, you can press F7 to only play and loop the current pattern you're on, and F8 only stops it. Now up next we have the samples tab. Here you can drag and drop audio and samples to play back into the program or chop and slice. If you click on insert sample, it'll add a new one. And then you can drag and drop your sample in or save it if you like what you've done with it. All samples will need some sort of adjustment usually unless they've already been worked on previously to work as usable samples. If you hit the pen button, you can just draw sound waves as well and invent something wacky. I'll just load a simple aim and break to give you a small demonstration. So, depending on what key you press on your keyboard, it'll start and play back at a different pitch. Now, here's where you need to get practice on it, because here's where you'll be chopping up samples to either use them as a loop or as a one-shot. By reading the hills and valleys of the sound wave, you can usually tell where certain hits or sudden sounds are at, and also see rhythm. You can select certain areas to hear that part in specific. You can also trim and cut to that part by right clicking on it, which trim will reduce it only to what you have selected, and cut will remove it from the sample. You can also set a loop which will make it repeat itself, or as a sustain loop, which will make it loop only when it's being held down. Up at the top you have some other useful commands such as amplify the sample if it's too quiet, but you could also do this later with VSTS too. Up next there's the instruments tab, which I personally rarely use this tab, but here you can tweak other aspects of the sound of each instrument you're using. But I think just by playing around and twiddling knobs you'll be able to figure out what it all does. Now let's go back to the patterns tab. You'll see that if we click here, the sample we just added will be there. This should work the same if you load up any BST instruments as explained previously. To insert a note, you can just simply just jam on your keyboard. 
Now, it's important to note that in trackers, if you're using a VSTI or a long sample at a loop and not a one-shot, when you input the note, the program will always read it as if it was being held down. So whatever synth or sample you're using will continue playing until you tell it to stop or replace it with another note as such. With the two equal symbol is how you usually stop a note from a VSTI. But for samples, you need to either change their volume to zero or add a sample cut effect. You can do this by just typing its acronym and the number which will be its value. Or double click it and head over to the drop down menu if that interface is more intuitive for you. Now, let's say I only wanted the kick from this sample. First we find it, then we cut it. On Windows, if you hold control and use the mouse wheel, you can zoom in. Then hold left click and select the area you want. Then right click and then cut or trim. In this case, I only want the kick, so I'll just trim it. And just like that, you sampled it. You can do the same trick with just about anything, whether it be part of a song or a drum break or anything at all. One shots tend to be the easiest to work with since you can align them to whatever BPM you want, but for songs, drum loops, vocals, or instruments playing melodies, you'll need to either speed them up or slow them down to make them match your BPM. You can also chop them up as well if you're feeling experimental. Here's an example. I just took the same aim and break, cut the snare, the hi-hat, and the kick all separately, then just rearranged it and applied some effects over it. With a VST instrument, it'd be the same. You load it up in the plugin section over at the general tab, and if it's a VST instrument, it'll show up here. If it's an effect, you can load it to a channel by clicking under it like this. And by either clicking edit in the general tab or here, you can adjust its properties. All in all, that should cover the basics. Just take your time to poke around, hover things, click things, and you'll find out what everything does. Everything is on screen, so feel free to explore. Don't just stay with this tutorial. I myself learned a lot from various sources, whether it was searching on the internet, asking other tracker musicians, watching other tracker musicians, and by using the OpenMPT manual on the OpenMPT wiki. So if you want to get into trackers, I'd absolutely recommend it. It was a one-way street for me, and I love working with them. So yeah, hope that was useful, and if I missed anything, let me know. And that's it.